how to handle high caseloads as an SLP. One of the most difficult parts of the job of being a medical SLP is knowing how to manage your caseload. This is something that is not easily taught and often takes guidance from a mentor and years of experience to really understand how you're possibly going to get everybody seen. Well, newsflash, sometimes you might not. There's a lot of moving parts that often are out of our control, but there are a few things we can do to systematize when we see patients and hopefully keep the overwhelm at bay. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, triage. This is a skill that can take years to develop, but the sooner you learn to do this effectively, it can help you to be a much more efficient clinician. Your facility might already have an official triage policy in place, and if they do, then that's fantastic. Please refer to that for guidance. If your facility does not, then consider sitting down with your team and management to create one. If everyone in the department is on the same page as far as expectations, then there will be a lot less communication breakdowns. First, talk with your DOR about specific situations where a patient may need to be seen first due to payer source issues. Sometimes these situations are not communicated effectively. And at 2 p.m., you're told that you've got to see John Smith, he's got to be seen before you leave for the day, and you had planned to see two more patients before needing to leave to pick up your kid from school. Does that sound familiar to anyone? See if there is a more systematic way to get this information from your DOR or the billing department first thing in the morning. In the most perfect world where all of your patients are available and anyone is free to be seen, Start with all clinical swallowing evaluations first, with priority to those that are pending discharge status. The last thing we wanna do is send a patient off to their next level of care or home without proper follow-up recommendations. Next, schedule all of your instrumental swallow assessments, whether that's coordinating with radiology for video fluoroscopy or getting set up for fees. Then move to other communication or cognitive evaluations, prioritizing those without a current mode of communication and those scheduled to discharge. Once all evaluations are completed and out of the way, then move to treatment, prioritizing those with the best prognosis for improvement. Again, these are very broad guidelines that can help you wrap your head around a very busy and overwhelming schedule. When I first started working out in skilled nursing, we didn't have guidelines on who needed to be seen when, other than just whoever was on my list needed to be seen. This was all fine and dandy when the numbers were manageable, but as soon as the census skyrocketed, it can feel like juggling fireballs. I made a plan with our DOR and therapy managers on how to triage the patients appropriately, and it definitely helped me feel much calmer on days when there were just so many patients that needed to be seen. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, do you have any specific questions about how to handle high case loads? Leave a comment below and tell me about it. We'll be sure to get your questions answered as soon as possible. Advocate for more staff. If you're consistently feeling like you're juggling fireballs with extremely high caseloads, it may be time to advocate for extra help in your department. Oftentimes, if you just go to your boss and say, we need to hire, I need help, it might not be met with much urgency, unfortunately. However, if you come armed with the cold hard facts and data, that's a much more convincing argument. It can feel like an entire extra chore documenting all of these things while your hair is already on fire managing the crazy caseload, but this is the best way to show administration that another SLP would be beneficial, not only to patient care, but also to their bottom line. Remember, we wanna speak their language if they are all about the financials. Start by documenting how many evaluations and treatment sessions you're not able to complete, and the number of patients that don't get seen in a typical week. Also calculate and document how many hours of work time that would equate to. This can help you advocate for the exact position that you have justified as necessary, whether it's PRN versus part-time or full-time. I worked in a facility just as a PRN that really, really could support a full-time SLP. There were a lot of patients coming in and falling through the cracks before I could get in to see them. I didn't like being in a position where I felt like the patients were missing out on the care they deserved, so I documented all of the patients that were not able to be seen because I was only PRN there a few days a week. Between all of the different departments and units in the facility, I was able to justify that this facility could in fact support a full-time SLP. When I brought this information and data to the administrator, he was ecstatic to see this information in writing. He said the team kept saying that they needed an SLP. They needed an SLP. 
but he had no idea the need was really there to support a full-time one. At the time, I was just finishing up supervising a CF, and she was able to walk right into that full-time position with the full support of the administration, and I was able to continue supporting her with what I had learned about the facility while I was there. Honesty with recommendations on where to follow up. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It totally, totally, totally stinks when there are so many patients that you need to get to that you know you're not able to. If you're not able to complete a formal evaluation on a patient because they are scheduled to discharge, consider consulting with that patient and family to educate them on what they might want to seek out at the next level of care. Educate them on clinical swallow evaluations or instrumental assessments that you'll want to encourage them to pursue. It really, really stinks when you're not able to see a patient that you know needs you, but being honest with them and offering them potential solutions to pursue at their next level of care can continue to keep these patients on the radar instead of completely falling through the cracks. My son was accepted into a really respected rehab clinic a few years ago. I was ecstatic and I felt so confident that this place would really be able to help us out and give us some guidance with him. We signed up for a session, went to the gym, and it was an absolute zoo. The clinic had so many kids scheduled at once and I immediately had a feeling that perhaps they were way overbooked, understaffed, and probably just really overwhelmed. The clinic director came over to talk to me and we engaged in some small talk before I asked what a consistent therapy schedule would look like for my son because it seemed like they were really, really busy. She said honestly they were swamped and they should not have accepted so many kids. She apologized for misleading us, but spent about 30 minutes with me giving me recommendations for other therapists and other treatment methods to pursue. Of course, I was upset at first, but I ended up feeling so grateful that we got the chance to talk with her because she educated us on so many other options for my son that I never even knew existed. We were able to get him into another specialized clinic that was much closer to home and with therapists that we love. Had she not done that, we probably would still have no idea what sorts of specialized therapies were out there that we never knew my son even needed. If you'd like to dive into some detailed resources, webinars for ASHA CEUs, and a thriving community to grow your knowledge around dysphagia, I invite you to check out the MedSLP Collective. We have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases and workplace dynamics. Head over to MedSLPCollective.com now to check it out, and the link will be in the description below.